In the last episode the infected girl got on the bus, and after 10 minutes of travel, the other passengers are constantly breathing droplets. Hundreds of virions land in the mucus and are immediately intercepted by defensins and complement. But the viral load is so overwhelming that the virions slowly cross the mucus. The body only lost the first battle and not the war, the virions still have to overcome the intracellular defenses and infect the cells of the nose. The virions begin to enter the cells by the dozens, the most affected are the cells that express a greater amount of viral receptors ACE2 and TMRPSS2. Viral genomes that have entered the cytoplasm begin to separate from the nucleocapsid proteins, waiting to meet a ribosome. The cell immediately attacks the viral genomes with RIG-like proteins. But this time, a large number of viral genomes entered the cell, and with them a large number of nucleocapsid proteins. Nucleocapsids defend the virus by inhibiting the TRIM25 protein, interrupting one of the metabolic pathways that activate interferon genes. But the cell also attacks with MDA5 proteins, which do not use ubiquitin and are not inhibited by nucleocapsids. MDA5 uses another ubiquitin-like protein called ISG15 to oligomerize and start MAV's polymerization on mitochondrial membranes, activating the TRAF pathways. The virions manage to disable one of the two main signaling pathways that activate the interferon gene against SARS-CoV-2, delaying the expression of interferon's proteins. A smaller number of virions enter via the endocytic pathway. Some of the virions are disintegrated by proteases while others remain close to the endosomal membrane and manage to fuse their membrane to escape into the cytoplasm. Pieces of viral genome in the endosome activate toll-like receptors 3 and 7 to activate the other two signaling pathways that activate the interferon gene. The cells continue to withstand the continuous viral attack, but in some of the passengers the viral load is very high and in other passengers the cells are weak, sick or old. In these people some viral genomes manage to bypass the MDA-5 defenses and find a ribosome. It is known that the viral genome is not translated into protein in the conventional way. Instead, the viral genome is thought to use its stem loops to bind ribosomes and position them directly on the start AUG sequence. The ribosome begins to translate the information into protein, and soon it will infect the cell. But all efforts will be in vain if the cells activate the antiviral state, the interferon gene is being activated by regulators. But the time it takes for the interferon proteins to be expressed after transfection is about 25 minutes, and the end proteins were able to reduce the signal, further delaying expression. 25 minutes is enough time for the virus to take control of the cell and stop the activation of the antiviral state, but the end protein only helps to a certain point, the virus is going to need other proteins to successfully infect the cell. The viral protein starts folding into its tridimensional shape at the time it comes out the ribosome. The ribosome continues translating the protein until it reaches a segment that contains a signal that halts translation until it reaches the endoplasmic reticulum. In the meantime the part of the polyprotein that got translated contains a papain-like protease which cleaves the polyprotein in two different parts, generating three independent proteins we call non-structural protein 1, 2, and 3. The non-structural protein 1 binds to the 40S ribosome subunit and competitively inhibits binding with messenger RNAs. This stops all cellular messenger RNA translation, interrupting the nucleus influence on the cell. Now the viral genomes are about to replace the cell genome, becoming the soul of the cell. The function of the non-structural protein 2 is still a mystery, but important in cell infection success. The viral genome is still far away from reaching the endoplasmic reticulum, on its way there, it inevitably encounters more RIG and MDA proteins. The nucleocapsids protect the viral genome from RIGs, but if the viral genome does not stop the MDA attacks it will be destroyed by the cell. 
But the papain-like protease from NSP3 also cleaves ISG-15 proteins from the MDA-5 proteins, inactivating the second most important pathway that detects viral genomes and initiates interferon expression. The IRF3 and IRF7 proteins are protected against ubiquitin degradation by ISG gelation. When the papain-like protease cleaves the ISG proteins from IRFs it promotes their degradation, further diminishing the interferon antiviral signal by toll-like receptors. The ribosome and viral genome eventually reach the endoplasmic reticulum, where membrane proteins translocates the polyprotein in and out of the endoplasmic reticulum membrane. The papain-like protease also cleaves the polyprotein in a third part, separating itself from the polyprotein polymer. It is the biggest multi-domain protein produced by coronaviruses. Each domain with a different function, one of the domains it's the papain-like protease. The polyprotein also contains a 3-CL protease, this protease binds into 11 parts of the polyprotein and cleaves them generating up to 12 additional non-structural proteins. NSP5 is the 3-CL protease, two of them bind into form a dimer and increase its catalytic speed. The ribosome continues with the translation of the polyprotein and stalls a little at a for-loop pseudonaut. The ribosome manages to slowly melt the pseudonaut as it moves forward, but finds a AAU sequence that codes for stop and disassembles to end translation. But the viral genome contains a slippery sequence six nucleotides ahead of the pseudonaut. When the ribosome stalls and slowly melts the pseudonaut it can randomly slip one nucleotide backwards. If this happens the ribosome does not read the AUU sequence and continues moving forward, translating the information until it comes across another AUU codon that disassembles the ribosome and stops translation. Protease NSP5 finishes cleaving the polyprotein. This mechanism of synthesizing a giant protein to later be cut into 15 proteins in a single ribosome translation is of great advantage in accelerating viral infection. Due to the ribosomal frameshift mechanism the pseudonaut causes, the ribosomes synthesize a short polyprotein that we call 1A, and a long polyprotein that we call 1AB. This mechanism produces a higher amount of the first 10 non-structural proteins, which are required in large amounts to successfully evade the immune system and remodel the endoplasmic reticulum. Ten minutes later, the first messenger RNAs encoding interferons that manage to get transcribed begin to leave the nucleus, and if they get translated, the antiviral state can be activated. But after 10 minutes the ribosomes have already synthesized enough NSP1s to inhibit mRNA translation, lowering interferon expression to harmless levels for viral survival. The cell still has one last chance to survive the viral infection, if a neighbor's cell manages to express interferon proteins, it can help infected cells by inducing them into the antiviral state. The interferon proteins bind to interferon receptors on infected cells, and activate STATS 1 and 2. If this proteins reach the nucleus in large amounts, the cell can still activate the antiviral state if there is not too many NSP1 proteins inhibiting ribosomes. But the multipurpose Swiss Army knife nucleocapsid protein enters in action again and binds to STATS 1 and 2, competitively inhibiting their activation by JAK. As we can see, the viral proteins maintain the cell in a molecular submission hold, inhibiting key proteins in the interferon metabolism, impeding the activation of the antiviral state. The bus arrives at the bus stop and after a 25-minute trip, six people became infected. A 16-year-old adolescent with normal physical condition and body mass. A young adult of 23 years with the physical condition and body mass of an athlete. A 32-year-old adult with a normal physical condition and body mass. A 32-year-old adult who is severely obese, has hypertension and diabetes. A 45-year-old adult with normal body mass but suffers from hypertension. And a 82-year-old with normal body mass. Each person gets home and continues their normal everyday activities. In the course of the night the virus begins to replicate their genomes inside vesicles made out of the endoplasmic reticulum membrane. 
In the next episode, we will see the viral genome replication phase of the viral cycle.